All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. 500, Mr. Delgado here, going to do it, going to do it bigly. And hopefully we could go ahead and practice some of these new problems here, and we're going to be looking at some percents. All right. So hopefully we could be working on these basic percent questions and we could increase our ability to understand what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So let's go ahead and take a look at this right here. Okay. Well, first thing before we even start looking at this stuff, we got to understand what a percent is. A percent is basically a number out of a hundred. Okay. Basically it helps us to understand percents as proportional relationships that basically compare the total amount or what we're comparing it to, to some standardized form, which is the hundred. Okay. And that's what essentially a percent is. But a lot of these questions do involve understanding how to read these problems and turn them into mathematical equations. That's what we're going to practice right now. And we're going to get real good at it. And we're going to be knocking these out of the park. All right. First things first, number 13, 21%. All right. First thing we could already see 21%. We could write 21. Whoa, whoa. We don't want to do that. We want to keep that up there. We could go ahead and write 21% as 21 out of 100. Now we got this word of, of means we're going to multiply it, but we do not know the number we're going to multiply it by of what number? Well, 21 out of hundred times X is now going to equal to 2 million. So all we're doing here is essentially reading this and turning it into an equation. Now here's the deal. Some people automatically will turn 21 out of hundred into 0.21. And so now this becomes 0.21 times X equals to 2 million. Okay. So if you know your decimal fraction percent conversions, this shouldn't be that hard to understand. Now we're looking for X. So we're going to have to work backwards here. We're going to have to cancel out this 0.21 by basically dividing both sides by 0.21. So, we go ahead and do that. Guess what happens to the 0.21s? Guess what happens to the 21%? Canceled out. Whatever you do on the left, you do to the right. And we have ourselves our real equation for setting this up. We got ourselves 2 million divided by 0.21. And we go ahead and type that in. Now, of course, you don't want to use 0.21. You want to use 21 out of 100. Well, we could do that too. You could do that too. We'll go ahead and set it up right now as a decimal, but some future problems, we'll go ahead and use 21 out of 100. We'll go ahead and use the out of 100 style of a percent because there's some problems that lend itself to using that. Well, in any case, our correct answer here is 9.52 times 10 to the sixth. Now, some of you might get some crazy ideas here. Some of y'all might be super crazy and might want to turn that into standard form, which you sure can. Notice we could put 952 and we're going to add four zeros to it. And if we take a look at this number right here, it does seem reasonable. It does seem reasonable because 21% is going to give us 2 million. It's going to give us 2 million right here. That's what it says. So 100% our complete value should be much greater than that, which in this case is about 9,520,000. Okay. So it's a reasonable answer, but that doesn't mean we want to write standard form. All right, let's take a look at our next problem here. We got 16 and three fourths. 16 and three fourths is, we see that is word, gotta put that equal sign, gotta put that equal sign, make sure you do it right. What percent? So it's what percent? Ah, yeah, buddy, X out of 100. This is gonna be good. Of, of means multiply 120. Now, again, if you know that math knowledge, we're not going to be using 16 and 3 fourths. Now, of course, you could type in 16.3.4 into your calculator like I just did right here. And you could go ahead and see 16.3.4. We got that mixed number going on. We hit enter. We hit yellow show. And we got 16.75. Now, some of y'all could already do that math in your head, and that's good. If you could do that math in your head, even better. But 16.75 now equals to X out of 100 times 120. All right. So what we need to do is undo some of these things right here. Some of these things. We got to undo that 120 right there. We got to undo that 100. Well, pretty easy if you know how to manipulate equations. Well, we're going to do that 120 by dividing both sides by 120. Cancels out on the left. I mean, cancels out on that right. So let's cancel it out on the left. Okay. 
But we don't have just that to undo. We got ourselves that 100 right there. How do we cancel out that 100, that dividing by 100? Well, guess what? We're going to multiply both sides by 100. We're multiplying both sides by 100. And check out what we got. Basically, we got 120. Instead of being in the numerator side, it's in the denominator side on the other side of the equation. And we got that 100, which was in the denominator side on the right, is now going to be in the numerator side on the left. And so now we got ourselves an easy way to do this problem. We're going to go ahead and do 16.75 and multiply it by 100. We're multiplying so we can cancel out that divide by 100. Then we're going to get that answer, that product, and we're going to divide it by 120. And so we get an answer, beautiful answer, of 13 point well i messed up there i mean we could have put 13.9 because i was hitting yellow show but really some of y'all know what it really is 1.40 times 10 to the first or in this case 14.0 i messed up i was hitting yellow show but remember we could be one decimal place off one significant digit off on the third digit we could be one so i would be technically correct is 13.9 the best answer? Of course not. The correct answer should be 14.0 because, you know, the way calculators work, we round it off. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure you can do these right, okay? And, well, working with me, working together, we're going to get these problems right. Now, let's take a look at that next one right here. What percent, ooh, ooh this is already good, of 1,000, we got that is, we got that is, is means equals 1 eighth. This is a beautiful problem. So what percent? X out of 100. Immediately, X out of 100. Multiplied by 1,000. Okay, now some of y'all may automatically want to just simplify the left side and not work with what's on the left side. You know, not undo both of them. And you can surely do that. Because ultimately what we see is X with 1,000 being multiplied by it. And we're going to get that number and divide it by 100. And if you automatically simplify it, well, 1,000 divided by 100, we could simplify that, and that's the same as 10x. So that's the thing about working with percents. If you know how to simplify stuff, you know how to write stuff down correctly, you don't have to spend your time doing all this crazy work. Now we know we got 10x. We got 10x, and 10x is apparently equal to 1 eighth. So to undo this, undo this, we're going to have to divide both sides by what? By what? by 10. Easy work. We're dividing both sides by 10. We're dividing both sides by 10. And so our 10s cancel out. So really what we should be doing here is getting 1 8th, 1 enter, 8 divide, or 0.1.8, right? 0.1.8. Then we're going to divide that bad boy by 10. And now we got ourselves our percent here, which is 0.0125. Or, you want to keep it in scientific form, 1.25 times 10 to the negative second. Ladies and gentlemen, completely reasonable answer. Look, if you wanted to, instead of just simplifying right there, you could have divided 1 eighth by 1,000 and then multiplied it by 100. And you could go ahead and see that's the correct answer as well. We get that same exact word. But the beautiful thing about math is anytime you could simplify stuff, you could make stuff on both sides little bit of equivalency right here doing the same stuff on both sides it's easy work easy work all right let's set up this next one we got pi and that doesn't mean we got 3.14 we got ourselves what pi we got pi is what percent so we're going to change this into a percent form of 10,000 so let's go ahead and set this bad boy up pi so we're going to use that pi is is means equal sign what percent equals x out of 100 okay we're gonna get our x and divide it by 100 of 10,000. All right. So let's say you don't want to simplify this time. Let's say you don't want to simplify this time. Well, what you could do is just undo these hundreds and 10,000. And at the end, you're going to get the same exact answer. How do we undo that divide by 100? Well, we're going to multiply both sides by 100. So the first thing we do, multiply both sides by 100, hundreds get canceled. Okay. That's how we do it. But now we don't want that 10,000 at the top. Well, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 10,000 here. 10,000. 10,000. We're dividing both sides by 10,000. And as you can see, okay? Now, 
You know what? You can't. Maybe you can see it. Maybe you can't. But I'm going to show you right now. If we just had pi equals x out of 100 multiplied by 10,000, we could have simplified the 10,000 in that 100 into what? 10,000 divided by 100 is 100. So we could have wrote pi equals to 100 times x. These right here are equivalent. This is equivalent to this right there. Now look at what's going to end up happening if we simplify the left side right now. We got 100 pi's divided by 10,000. Hmm. Well, if you know your tricks here, if you know some little simplification tricks, we could cancel out these zeros, right? We cancel out these zeros. And look what we're really left with. We're left with 1 pi divided by 100. We're left with pi divided by 100 equals x. Now, if I'm working back with this one right here, well, what did we need to do here? We would have had to divide both sides by 100. And the hundreds cancel each other out. And we're still left with the same thing. Pi over 100 equals x. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you know how to do math, this is easy. This is easy stuff. Easy stuff. And that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to do. Make this easy. Now, there is one big problem here. I don't like this. This is an old school problem. I could tell because they made an error right here. Since they ask you what percent, and they didn't put the percent symbol here, some people get confused. But the correct answer is 13.4 times 10 to the negative second. Of course, some of y'all want to use that standard notation. We got 0 0.0314. But it's very important that you answer the question what it's asking. Because if you answer what it's asking, you're never gonna get these wrong. But I do want to note, I want to note here, this problem is missing that percent symbol because when they ask you for a percent, that percent symbol should be there, okay? Because there's some connotation, there's some things wrong here, and people might think, you know what, there's no percent symbol, that means we gotta write it as a decimal. But that's not that's not what this problem is asking for, it's asking for that percent. So, you know, there were some issues here, but you know what, we're here to make sure that we can handle this stuff. And that's what I'm here to help you do, handle it. Handle it and do it right. Let's go, next problem, let's hit it. Pot is what percent? of the boiling temperature in Celsius. Now here's the deal. If you don't know what the boiling temperature is, you already got yourself some big problems. But I'm here to help you out. I'm here to help you out. All of this other stuff right here is pretty easy. We got pi equals x out of 100. But if you don't know Celsius boiling temperatures, but let's say you know the Fahrenheit boiling temperature of 212 degrees, 212, because that's what we focus on a lot in the United States. We focus on Fahrenheit, okay? You know what I'm saying? We focus on that big F, degree F, that Fahrenheit. Well, what you could have done is go ahead and put 212 on your little calculator right there. You guys see that? 212. And then you could go ahead and hit the conversion. Blue 7. Blue 7. If you got that blue 7 right there, I got that 7 right there. And if you look at the blue, you could convert that Fahrenheit boiling temperature into Celsius. And you get yourself your boiling temperature in Celsius. And of course, we're gonna see something pretty interesting happen. That boiling temperature in Celsius is 100. So we're gonna get pi is what percent? So we set up pi is equals x out of 100 of, of means multiply, and we're gonna multiply it by what? 100. Ladies and gentlemen, you could already see what the answer is going to be. The hundreds cancel out. Guess what x equals to? Guess what our missing value is? It's pi. It's 3.14. Now, of course, that's not pi, but that's what it is when we write it in that standard form, or 3.14 times 10 to the 0. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it is. That's what it is. Easy work. Easy work. But you got to make sure you can handle it. Now, of course, some of y'all might be like, dude, I can't even see what you wrote. Well, okay, I will go ahead and make it a little dark for y'all. Okay, and that's what it is. That's what it is. But ladies and gentlemen, this is easy work. This is easy work. Hopefully you understand this because you know what? Easy problems, easy answers. And we got to get these easy problems so we get these easy answers. Easy points. Easy nine points. All right, we got one million. One million. So we got to know how to write a million. One million is one with six zeros after it. You could go ahead and use your commas to help you out. Of course, you don't write commas when you type it in your calculator, but those commas help us, the humans, identify what kind of number this is. And in this case, this one million is what percent, x out of 100, right? x out of 100, what percent of, of, 
We got one trillion now. We might have some problems here, but we got 1,000 right there. Add another comma, add the three zeros. We got one million right there. Add a comma, add three zeros. We got a billion right there. And now we got one comma and three more zeros. Guess what we just created? Ch -ch 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 trillion. That's what it is, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do this problem. I'm going to go ahead and start simplifying this. We got a hundred at the bottom. We got a trillion at the top. We can cancel out these two zeros right here. And this whole thing at the bottom here. So technically, we got ourselves what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got a one with ten zeros after it. So basically, we're going to divide both sides by a one with ten zeros after it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And so whatever we do on the left, we got to do on the right. One, two. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, of course, we already know what's going to cancel. This is going to cancel. This is going to cancel. But now we can start even seeing the math here. We're going to be able to cancel out these powers of ten, these powers right here, and we're going to be left with some excellent things. Now, notice we can't really cancel numbers out like this. The only reason this works is because the number on the top which is 1 million, is the same as 10 to the 6th power, all right? And that number at the bottom here, which is 1 with 10 zeros after it, I mean, I guess it's what, 10 billion? Is the same thing as 1 to the, I mean, it's 10 to the 10th power, okay? So what ends up happening here is that we're left with 1 over 10 and that's going to equal to x ladies and gentlemen now of course you don't understand all that stuff you don't see all that stuff hey but you just put it in your calculator we got 1 million remember 1 million is what we started with and now we're going to go ahead and divide it by oh man i got to make sure i can add all these zeros correctly man that's the problem here because these zeros are what gives us problems here and we end up with 1.00 1.00 times 10 to the negative fourth power. And if you really do the math times 10 to the negative fourth, we end up with 0 .0001 zero zero. Remember, that's tenths place. That's the hundredths. That's the thousandths. And this, my friends, is the ten thousandths, which is why it's exactly the same as this right here. It's exactly the same because one in the 10,000th place is the same as one over 10,000. One of the beautiful things about math, math is precious, it's gorgeous. It's the most beautiful thing on earth because the patterns always make sense. Math never lies. And that's why we're gonna make sure we can handle the percents because it makes sense. And we're gonna make it right here. We got one million is 2% of what number? All right, let's set this bad boy up. One million, so it's gonna be one with six zeros after it. Use your commas if you need to. Is, is, 2%. 2% is two out of 100. We could go ahead and change that to a decimal right now. Of X, of X. So we're gonna go ahead and do this right. Here. Now look, I'm gonna show you another different way some people like to do this problem. They don't like changes to decimals. And, you know, I agree with them. You know, it is what it is. I mean, sometimes we don't like, we want to work with those fractions. So how do we really eliminate a fraction being multiplied by the number, letter X? You know, how do we undo that? Well, we should be really multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. That's what we're doing. We're going to multiply both sides by that reciprocal here. So if we multiply both sides by the reciprocal, Remember, reciprocal is the multiplicative inverse of a fraction, of any number. We just flip it around. We flip it around town. Okay, I was watching some SpongeBob earlier, and you know what? He was doing that little dance where he was moving around town. Moving around town. And you know, you know me, I gotta throw that SpongeBob in there because you know, this is what it is. But so really what ends up happening is the twos in my numerator and twos in the denominator cancel out on the right. The 100 in the denominator, 100 in the numerator cancel out on the right. And so we're left with x isolated. x is by itself, all by itself. 
Oh no. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. We're gonna find some friends for that X right now. We're gonna find out who you really are, X. We don't have to go through all this drama and stuff. We're just gonna find who, who you really are. Now, some of you might even say, why multiply by 100 divided by 2? Well, we could just get that and multiply it by 50. If you're able to see this, ladies and gentlemen, hey, power to you. Power to you. So we got 50 because 100 divided by 2 is 50. And we're going to multiply that by 1 million. Hmm. I could almost guarantee it's probably going to be like hmm, 50 times a million. Probably be, hmm, hmm. Using that math knowledge, probably about 50 million. Easy as that. And if you want, you go ahead and write that standard notation. 50 million. Boom. Five, zero, 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 zero. Or that scientific notation, 5.00 times 10 to the 7. And notice this here, ladies and gentlemen. 1 million is actually 1.00 times 10 to the 6th power. Well, we're multiplying it by 50. That means we're going to end up with another zero at the end. Which is why that 6 just turned to the 7th power, alright? And since we multiplied by 50, that means that 1, 1.00, 1 it's not going to be 1 no more. It's going to be the number f -f 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 5 Now, I would pick up all 5, but I got my pen. You know what? I drop it. I drop that pen. Show you that 5. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just having a good time, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a good time. The whole point of this is to be having... A good time, okay? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and get this. All right, let's continue with the problems and let's make make it happen, okay? What percent? What percent? That means X out of 100 of 1 million, okay? Here's the good thing. I mean, again, we could go ahead and start simplifying this, but we got to write that million down first. Is, is, is means equals 10. Is 10. Well, of course, when we start doing this work, we could go ahead and multiply it by the reciprocal. What do you mean, Mr. Thing? There's no frac. What are you talking about? What are you reciprocal? We're going to multiply by 100 over x? No, my friends. Since we're multiplying x over 100 by 1 million, technically, we could rewrite this as 1 million x over 100. That's really what it is. And that's equal to 10. So when I say we multiply by the reciprocal, we could multiply both sides by a hundred over one million. Yeah, boy. And whatever we do on the left, you best believe we're going to do it on the right. We're going to do it on the right. Now, of course, we just go ahead and set it up here. Now, now, of course, some of you just bust down in the calculator be like, yo, yo, this is pretty easy. We don't have to do all this work. But, of course, I want to make sure that our algebra skills are on point. Because algebra... It's super important to this. And I don't mean that algebra, you know, I mean, this calculator's test. We got to use our tool, our best friend right here. That's important to us. But, of course, our mind's important to us. This is what makes everything happen. So we got to make sure that mind's on point. So we're going to go ahead and hit 10 and 100 multiply because 10 times 100, you know, it's a numerator of the fraction. We can multiply them. And then we're going to divide that by the beautiful 1 million. Now, of course, some of you, you might just be canceling out zeros. Some of y'all, if you see it, I mean, you'll automatically start understanding the percentages. We automatically get our answer 1.00 times 10 to the negative third. Of course, some of y'all want to put that standard form. Standard form. And you can go in and put that standard form. As you can see, that one is in the thousands place. And you could have already made that prediction if you just did the math right here. We got 10 times 100 is 1,000. Notice, if I multiply these right here, I get that. Now, we got that million at the bottom. We got that million. It's one with how many zeros? Six. Look at what happens. Cancel. Cancel these out. Cancel these out. And we're left with dun, dun, dun. One out of a thousand. Which completely makes sense with our standard form, which is one in the thousands place 1000 okay so look math makes sense don't ever think you can't do this math super easy but you gotta put in the work and that's what i'm here to help you do so let's put in that work let's go ahead and start making sure we can handle these problems here so we got 252 is 102 percent of what number all right let's set that bad boy up 252 so we got 252 is 
a hundred and two percent a hundred and two out of a hundred of x ladies and gentlemen we got to isolate that x easy work we multiply by the reciprocal we multiply it by a hundred over 102 let me go ahead and make that parentheses around both of them and whatever you do on the right we surely gonna do on the left whatever we do on one side we surely gonna do the other side because that's how math works we ain't gonna be doing no random math here we ain't gonna be doing no magic math some random trick math we're gonna be doing the real work and so what we got to do is 252 times 100 divided by 102 now of course you don't have to do that all the time you don't have to do that all the time some of y'all might have just changed 252, I apologize, 102% into a decimal, 1.02. And you could have just gotten 252 and divided by 1.02 if you wanted to. But at the end of the day, percents are super easy. I'm just showing you the ways. Yet again, if you change 252 and you change that 102% into 1.02 times X, all you had to do was divide both sides by 1.02. So that's why some people here do like to use the decimal form when given that percent. You use that decimal form, you might save yourself a little bit of time. And honestly, you could tie it out right now. 252, and 1.02 divide, and guess what we got? Same answer, same answer. Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, buddy, that's why math's beautiful. All right, next prompt. 275 is what percent? Ooh, less than, less than. 525 now look I actually wasn't supposed to put this problem here I'm gonna go ahead and have another problem later for this type of problem here but we could still kind of set this bad boy up this is actually this is actually a percent change problem okay what we're really doing here is we're gonna find the difference between these numbers okay so let me go ahead and erase all this bad boy work right here okay it's a percent change problem I really didn't want to do this right now but we'll go ahead and set it up okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and see 275 is what percent less than 525 okay so easiest way to set this bad boy up is find the difference over the original number and then we're going to change that into a percent what do i mean so my original number would be 525 because this is what we're comparing to so we're going to do 525 minus sorry sorry not minus we're going to go ahead and do um no well, i mean we okay let's go we look honestly our percent it didn't matter which ones because it already says percent less so we already understand that we're going to be decreasing right here we got 275 is what percent less than 525 so we could go ahead and subtract that 275 from it okay and we're gonna go ahead and put it over our original amount okay and then that's gonna go ahead and equal to something right here let's go ahead and put that in there we got 525 enter 275 minus so we end up with 250 250 right here so 250 is gonna be less I mean that's the difference right here that's a difference okay so now we got to see how much less than 525 what percent less than that would it be essentially what we're doing ladies and gentlemen is we're saying 525 is equal to a hundred percent a hundred percent all right and 275 is equal to some percent right here and then we could actually figure it out but what we're gonna need to do here is now uh, sorry about that we're gonna need to change that that's a fraction right there we could divide those and we're gonna have to change that into a percent but as you can see what I got here 250 divided by 525 is 4.76 times 10 to the negative first okay which means that this number this 275 is well we multiply that by 100 because you know we got that decimal in our calculator we want to multiply by 100 remember we're gonna get that answer which is a fraction multiply it by 100 and now we got our percent form so that means 275 is actually 47.6 percent lower than the original amount of 100 okay now you may not believe me you may say mr legado you, you're doing some math magic right here well if we take take a look at this 275 is actually five uh, 52.4 percent it's 52.4 percent of that 525 okay it, that, you know how I did it? I just got 275, put it over 525, divided, multiplied by 100. I see my 52.4 right here, 52.4%.
Now, the thing is, it's not asking you what percent of is it. It's not asking you what percent of. And the other problems, it's asking you what percent of. So our answer would have been, if it said of, 52.4%. But it's not asking us that. It's asking us how much less than that original 100% it is. So what we would have needed to do is subtract from 100%. But this formula right here, which is really the difference, so it's our new value minus the old value. Now, of course, I went ahead and put the new, the old value first. Because if you put new minus old in this case, in this case, we're going to end up with a negative percent. And why would that answer be negative? Why would 275 minus 525 over 525 give us negative? Because we're going down. Because it's decreasing. That negative tells us the direction of the percent change. But really, we're going to go ahead and just really find the difference. In this problem, it already says we're getting percent less than. It's already a decrease. We're already going less and so this fraction right here, the one I just wrote, is how we get that percent difference. But it's not a percent until we multiply it by 100, okay? So that's what gives us that percent change. Now, I didn't want to do this problem, but since it's here, I just went ahead and did it. I needed to check my notes next time, all right? We got to check these notes because you know what? I didn't want this problem done yet. We're going to put this on percents part two, but it's all good. We're going to have a little little preview of the good stuff all right ladies and gentlemen let's go ahead and take a look at the next problem right here we got 302 well, 3212 3212 is what percent what percent of five min look this is a hard problem because you better write the numbers correctly you write those numbers wrong well then we're gonna end up with some problems here and that's why we gotta write these numbers correct you write those numbers incorrect well we ain't gonna be getting this right answer here. So, five million, 102,000. Now this is where those commas come into play if you wanna write those commas, 842. All right here, so easiest way to do this problem, we multiply both sides by the reciprocal. That means we're gonna multiply this by 100 over five, one, zero, two, eight, four, two. And whatever you do on the right, we surely are gonna do on the left. So on this side, we're going to go ahead and multiply this by 100 divided by 5, 1, 0, 2, 8, 4, 2. Okay, that's supposed to be a 4, my friends. That's supposed to be a 4. Let's see. Hopefully, I won't go ahead and destroy this by choosing uh, an eraser that's too big here. Let's see if I can get right there. Oh, man, it destroyed the whole 4. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and rewrite it anyways. All right, so let's go ahead and put that 4, that 2, and there you go. All right. And these are supposed to be a hundreds. Let me close these off. They look like sixes. I know what they mean. Now they look like a little bit of the eyes. I'm looking around up there. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, we got ourselves 32, 1, 2. Enter. Then we're going to multiply that by 100. We're going to divide that by 5102842. And guess what we got? We got ourselves our percent ready to go. We got ourselves 6.29 times 10 to the negative second, which makes sense because 3,000 is a lot smaller than 5 million. That's why this percent is not even a whole number. It's less than a whole number, okay? So both ways work. Okay, let's do the next problem. 30, wait, wait, 23, 23 and 8 tenths. Now look, you could write 23 and 8 tenths, put that in your calculator, or you could just understand 23 and 8 tenths is the same as 23.8, all right? Percent, ooh boy, I like this one. So that means we would have had to change this into this, all right? And some of y'all don't even wanna use 23.8 over 100. Some of y'all might have changed it immediately into this. That's the good thing. If you know math knowledge, you know numeracy, you're gonna choose what's best for you. So we got 23 and 8 tenths percent of 6,251 is what number? Look, if you know math numeracy like we just did right now, we know equivalency of math. We know how to manipulate numbers. Well, you just see it. We're going to go ahead and get 0.238 of means multiply 6,251. And we get our answer. What number? What number are we looking for? That number. That number when we multiply 0.238 times 6251. And we end up with 1,490 or 1 1.49 times 10 to the third, okay? Easy work, easy work. All right, next problem. 62 and 1 eighth percent. Ooh, I already like this. 
if you know again your equivalencies you know one eighth you know what that is one eighth is the same as 0.125 we get some easy work so we get 62.125 percent we could automatically turn that into 0.62125 as a decimal decimal equivalency of seven million two hundred thousand and six is what number simple as that ladies and gentlemen the easiest thing about percents is if you understand how to read them if you really understand how to read them this is easy work and we end up with our answer four four seven one two three four or four million four hundred and seventy thousand 4.47 times 10 to the 6 for those who want to write in scientific form. That's what it is. Next problem. What number? What number? That's the number. Letter X is 22 and one third percent. Oh, see, this one's a little bit harder. I would recommend not, not at all, changing this into a decimal until your calculator messes with this bad boy. I would put this as 22 and one third as a mixed number. 22.1.3 and then I would get that answer and then divide it by a hundred so we could have the right decimal place value everything perfect because we can't just put 0.22333333 three, 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 because at the end there's still more threes and it might affect our answer remember that one third is a repeating number goes on forever so that's what I would recommend is but anyways this percent of one million now of course some of you might not even want to do that some of you might just want to cancel out this hundred and this million and end up with what? 10,000. But you know what? You got to do what works best for you. That's the good thing about this right here. If you understand mathematics, you'll do what's best for you. So in this problem, we get 22.3. Sorry, I'm just messing around here. And then we're going to multiply that by that 1 million after we change that into a decimal by dividing by 100. And we got ourselves easy easy answer of 2.23 times 10 to the fifth power or 223123 all right three zeros at the end now of course we know those aren't really zeros because if we know one third all those zeros and everything after that decimal it's gonna be threes but we got that calculators test and we got to write that proper form okay so we got to just make sure we're doing what we got to do here okay anyways next problem next problem calculate the value of seven eighths of okay so this looks good already so we got seven eighths we got seven eighths of 31 percent let's go ahead and do point 31 of a perfect score on the test which is a full hun all right this is an easy problem man this is an easy problem we got 7 enter, 8 divide, or dot 7 dot 8. Multiply by that point 31. Multiply by that 400. And guess what? It doesn't look like that good of a score. 109. Well, I mean, it's decent. It's all right. But it ain't qualifying for state. It ain't getting you no places. Well, not in the junior high level. You get something like that in elementary. First test. Ooh, that's, a, that's, that's money right there. That's money. Let's do number 13. What is 42% of? Look, I'm just going to write dot 42, right? If we understand equivalency, it's easy. Of 8 fifths, 8 fifths of 1 billion, which is not six zeros. It's nine zeros after one. And all we got to do is just multiply these numbers. Point 42, 8, enter, 5, divide, multiply. Or if you do that in your head, 1.6, you know, some of y'all can do that times 1 billion now here's the problem my eyes start playing tricks on me when i write so many zeros so that's the issue here you got to make sure you write these things correctly but we end up with an answer of 6.72 times 10 to the 8th look i wouldn't even write that in standard form it ain't worth it, it ain't worth it it's gonna be like 100 million 672 million 100 yeah yeah it's not even worth it 67 percent of 67 67 percent change it to a decimal of Pi is what number? Ooh, that's easy. Yellow pi, 0.67, multiply, easy word, 210, 2.10, 2.10, or 2.10 times 10 to the zero. Easy work, ladies and gentlemen, easy work. Now, make sure you don't end up like Mr. Delgado here, making that 10, 
that zero at the top looked like a six. I had to change that, all right? Because we don't want to end up getting ourselves counted wrong just because we write that zero a little sloppy. Seven and two thirds. Seven and two thirds is what percent of 18 and 7 thirteenths? Notice I actually did something a little different. I wrote 18 and 7 thirteenths. That's a three, not thirteenths. And let's put that one little bit over here so we can see that thirteenths, okay? 18 and 7 thirteenths. I put that first because I'm going to divide that by 100 here. Put that x right here so you guys can even see me manipulating the equation makes this easier to do the work so really what we got to do to get this answer is to multiply by the reciprocal we're going to multiply by 100 over 18 and 7 thirteenths okay if you understand the math this is easy cake easy cake but whatever you do on one side make sure you do it to the other side so really what we're going to be doing here is get that seven and two thirds this is where that writing numbers as a mixed number trick really helps us out remember that's 100 and this 18 and 7 thirteens cancel each other out, but we're gonna hit that dot seven, dot two, dot three. Put too many dots here, that's why I'm messing up right here, ladies and gentlemen, I didn't mean to put that many dots. But dot seven, dot two, dot three. Oh my God, I did it again, it's because I'm hitting dot seven. You don't hit dot seven. You guys need to tell me I'm making mistakes. You gotta be Mr. 500. You're not getting that perfect 500. That means perfect score in the calculator puts a perfect score in the math test, you know, get that 500. We ain't getting that 500 if you're making mistakes like this. 7.2.3. That's what you got to do. You got to tell me this stuff, man. I'm making myself look all silly over here. Multiply by 100. 18.7.13. Divide. Easy work. We get ourselves 4.14 times 10 to the first. Or 41.4. Ladies and gentlemen, easy work, easy work. Let's keep it going, let's keep it going. Calculate 92% of, well, let's go ahead and set it up. 92%, let's not use 92 over 100. Let's use decimal 92. That's why we gotta know our equivalency. It makes these problems faster. Of 7%, oh man. Don't put 0.7. You put 0.7, you got yourself a big boo-boo. You're going down the drain. It's not 0.7, because 0.7 would be 70%. It's 0 0.07, all right? You make sure you get that correct. Of 1 million, 100, ooh, no, I got this already wrong. I gotta make sure I'm reading correctly, ladies and gentlemen. It's 1 million, 1,000. That means 1001, 100. This problem is meant to throw you off. If you got any place value in the wrong spot, game over, you lost, you took the big L. You took the big L, okay? We don't need to be taking no Ls here. We don't need to be taking no Ls because we're training hard and we don't want to lose nine points. We're working so hard and we're going to make it happen, ladies and gentlemen. So we got to go ahead and start with 0.92. Multiply by 0 0.07. Multiply by 1 million. Make sure you're writing it correctly. Don't be messing up. 1,100. And now we got ourselves an easy answer. We got 6.45 times 10 to the fourth. Or better yet, 64500. 0, 0. Completely makes sense. All right, let's check out the next problem. 52% of, so that means we start with 52. 52, point 52, 52 hundredths. Notice, 52% is 52 out of 100. That's why we got 52 hundredths. Of 85%, which is 85 hundredths. Of 12,802. Easy work. So 0.52 multiplied by 0.85 multiplied by 12,802. And we got ourselves an answer. 5,660. Or 5.66 times 10 to the third. Easy problem, easy problem. Let's keep it up, let's keep it up. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and do this right here. We got ourselves one third of 80%, which is 80 hundredths, or just point A, let's just put point A. We don't need to write that extra zero. Of one million, so we're almost there, but it's not one million. It's one million one. Ooh. Some people get this stuff wrong, ladies and gentlemen. 0 0.1, 0 0.3, enter. 0 0.8, multiply. And 1 million. And 1 multiply. We get ourselves our answer. 267000, zero, 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 or 2.67 
times 10 to the fifth. Ladies and gentlemen, once you get the practice, once you get the hang of it, once you can convert these little baby sentences into math equations, ooh, easy, easy work, my friends. And that's what I'm here to help you out with, that easy work. Okay, now this one's a little bit difficult here. Because what we got to do is understand that this problem doesn't give us the numbers already to work with. We got the month of July here. And we're doing what percent? What percent? That means X out of 100 of the month of July. Month of July? What the? What do you mean by that? Is. Is. Now, I'm going to go ahead and leave that blank for a little bit. Is. 20. But not just 20. 20 minutes here. Now, the only way we could really do this problem is we got to basically do a quick conversion here. We got to understand the month of July. We got to understand the month of July. Now, look, I don't know how many days are in each month, but when I was a kid, when I was a kid, they used to tell me this knuckle trick right here. You got knuckle trick. Boom, 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 boom. Nah, 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 I'm not talking about that training I had. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the knuckle trick where you actually count and see if you land on a knuckle, that's 31 days. I'll show you what I mean right now. But if you land in between a space, that's 30 days, excluding February, which is 28, sometime 29, depending, you know, on what happens here. So let's go ahead and take a looky loo. All right. So now, of course, this is going a little opposite direction because, you know, you're looking at it in this review way, you know, so, so it's this opposite way because you're kind of like a mirror here, okay? But what I would do is, you know what? Maybe I could do it this way. Nah, nah, that's okay. I'm already, I'm already like, oh, I'm already, I'm already flexing on you. I'm already doing this pump, boom, pump. Nah, we're going to just do it this way. But just follow along, okay? So what you should do, what you should do is you grab your knuckles and you put them right next to each other right there. And so what we got to do is we start from the left. Okay, but my right is your left. So I'm going to try to do this right here. So I'm going to start with my left, which is, well, your left, my right. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so we start with, hopefully you're doing this too. Now I'm going to move my knuckles a little forward. This one right here on the very left, on my right, but your very left, is now January. That has 31 days. Next to it, that space would now count as February. And that has 28 days. Okay. It's the only one that doesn't have 30, okay? Now next, now it's on a knuckle. That's March, 31 days. Next one, April. It's in between the knuckles. That's 30 days. All right, next one. After March, it's, after April, it's May. 31 days. After May, knuckle. In between, June, 30 days. After that, it's on a knuckle. It's on a knuckle. That's July. And that's 31 days. Now, I'm going to continue this just so you can see it in the future here, okay? What you should do... Let me go ahead. What you should do is put the knuckles next to each other, okay? And so when you jump from July to August, when you go from this side right here, when you go from here... Sorry, when you go from here and you jump over, there's no space in there. So from July to August... There's another 31 days. July and August have 31 days. And then, then you continue the pattern. Then you continue the pattern. You keep going. And of course, after August, it's September, 30 days. After September, it's October, 31. Then November, 30. And then December, 31. So that's how you go ahead and remember. It was a little finger knuckle trick that they used to teach me back in the day. A little easy way to remember these things. So now that we know that the month of July is 31 days, okay? So we're gonna do this little conversion here. We gotta do 31 days. Now we gotta convert days into what? Well, hours, right? So now we multiply hours. So wait, wait, wait. So we multiply 31 days times 24 hours per day. And now that's basically gonna cancel out these days here because now the days in the numerator and denominator cancel out. But now we got to multiply that conversion, change it into minutes. And there's 60 minutes in one hour. Okay, so it's 60 minutes per hour. And now these hours cancel out. So to convert the month of July, one month is 31 days. 
we're going to basically multiply 31 times 24 times 60. Big dog style. And we get ourselves, I'll write it in my little space right here, 44640 minutes. Okay? It's very important that we understand that because we could only do this problem if in there's the same unit of measurement because the minutes are going to cancel each other out in a little bit. Okay? So now we could go ahead and do the work. Do the work. So easiest way to set this problem up, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. What do you mean? I'm going to multiply by 100 over 44640 minutes. Okay? And I'm putting that minutes to show you something. Now, of course, it's going to cancel out on the left side, okay, when we multiply by reciprocal. But when we do this work, it's going to simplify to 20 times 100, 20 what? 20 minutes times 100 over 44640 minutes. And since there's minutes in our numerator and denominator, it actually cancels them out. We don't have to worry about writing minutes in the percent because the minutes are gone. And that's why we're able to do this problem. We needed to do a conversion here. That's the mathematics behind this. Now, of course, I went into some unit conversions and I went into some cancellation of units because when you start doing more math, when you go to that next level, which hopefully all of us want to get to that next level, when we go to that next level, which is going to be high school math, maybe even some of that good math, some of that hard applied mathematics such as chemistry and what I like, that physics, we got to know how to cancel out these decimals, how to cancel out, not the decimals, the unit conversions, because that's... I mean, that's physics 101 right there. Being able to understand what kind of units you're going to be working with here. Because when we do applied mathematics, we're not just looking at numbers in isolation here. We're looking at actual numbers with conversions that could change everything here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's why we got to make sure we can do this. Okay, so at the end of the day, I hope you understood what's going on. We did a little conversion. We changed the one month of June into 31 days. Change that into hours by multiplying by 24 right here. And we change that into minutes by multiplying by 60. And that gave us 44640 minutes. And now we can do the problem, okay? So that's the hard part about this, is being able to manipulate this stuff and turn it into the correct units of measurement. Like this bad boy right here. We're going to calculate the percent of a leap year. But we're going to convert it into hours. Now, again, I was talking about leap years. One leap year, one leap year. I was about to write leapfrog, yeah, that was leapfrog, the leapfrog, the leapfrog learning tools. Now, it's not an advertisement, I'm not getting paid by them, but you know what, I was, you know, and sometimes back in the day, you know, I gotta give props to those educational tools that help people, you know what I'm saying? And leapfrog was one of them. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Anyways, leap year is now equal to 366 days, okay? It's not 365 because now February has 29. 29 days, okay? So that one added day in February makes it turn into 366 days. And now we got to turn in that one leap year 366 days. We're going to do our conversions. We're going to multiply that by 24 hours. Why 24? Why 24? Because there are 24 hours in one day. And so what happens here is that these days cancel out. And so now we can go ahead and do 366 and multiply that bad boy by 24. And now I'm going to hit yellow show so we could go ahead and have the exact precise number. We got in one leap year, there's 8,784 what hours. There you go. So now this is the number we're going to use because now we're going to cancel these things out here. All right, so let's see. What percent of a leap year? So we got a leap year now. We got 8784 hours, right? Over 100. Over 100 because we're changing into a percent, okay? Changing into a percent is equal to 48 hours, okay? So here's the deal. We're going to have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Look, don't call it the flip fraction, okay? It is correct to be like, I mean, you know, technically it is the flip fraction. But we like to use that vocabulary here. And when we multiply both sides by that reciprocal, notice what happens. Well, this side cancels out immediately. I don't I don't have this. I mean, I could write it over here. I guess I'll write it over here just so you can see it cancel each other out. But, you know, we've done math enough times here. We've seen it enough that you should hopefully see it too, that we're canceling this stuff out. Now, what happens here is we're going to do 48 times 100, then divide that by 8784. 
But these hours, yet again, that's why we gotta have the same unit of measurement. They cancel each other out. This is one of the most important things to realize about percents, especially working with units, that we gotta cancel them out. And so in this problem here, we got ourselves 0.546%. Or some of y'all like to write that stat scientific notation, 5.46 times 10 to the negative first. Okay, so that's it. Easy, easy work, okay? Sometimes we gotta just understand that some of these problems have real life applications and we gotta have those same conversions. Last one, the log of 13. I put this one as last because it involves logarithms. Now, I'm not gonna really go into logarithms yet, but I want you to understand that log 13 could be intimidating for some people. See log 13, uh oh, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know what I'm doing. But if you know where the log button is, it's not that hard. It's right above the Y over X right here. I don't know if you guys can see it, let me go in and Put it right up there. You see that Y over X? It says log right there. You see where it says log? It's in yellow, yellow, yellow log. It's right above Y over X. So all you gotta do is just write it like this. Log, parentheses, log of 13. Basically, it kind of looks like it's multiplying, but we're doing a special operation here. We're using the logarithm button, okay? Is, is, is 13%, we could just write point 13 of what number? So how do we undo this nonsense? How do we undo this? Well, we want to get that X isolated. Divide both sides by 0 0.13. 0 0.13 right here. The 0.13s cancel. And now we got ourselves log of 13 divided by 0.13. And we got ourselves an easy, easy word. So log of 13, I got 1.11111. Okay? No, wait, it's actually 1.113943. Now look, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually show you what the log of 13 means is you're trying to figure out, you're trying to figure out 10 to the X gives us 13, okay? So when you do log of 13, when you do the log of 13, you're essentially figuring out the X that's gonna go right there. So 10 to what power gives me 13? It's kind of like you're working backwards and trying to figure out 10 to what power is gonna be 13. Well, apparently in this case, 10 to the 1.11, then I could keep writing this, but it's gonna, it looks like it's an irrational number. It looks like it's gonna continue on forever and there's no pattern here, but 1139, yada, yada, yada. Approximately, 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 okay? Approximately that, you know? Um, is, is if you type it in, it's gonna approximately give us that 13, okay? Now I said approximately because, you know, it's an irrational number. It looks like I'm not gonna be able to get it completely, but there you go. There you go, that's what the log means. That's what the log of 13 means, okay? So my log of 13 is about 1.11. We're gonna get that and divide it by 0.13, and now we see it. Now we see that our correct answer for x in this problem, not the x for the log, but the x for the actual problem we're solving for, is 8.57. Or again, scientific notation for all y'all out there who like that, 8.47 times 10 to the zero, okay? So here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. This math is cake. But my focus here wasn't on doing some proportional relationships here, okay? That's not my focus here. My focus here was to make sure that all of us understand how to read carefully and change our sentences from the way they're written in the English language into mathematical language. And if we got that, then we might be ready to hit the next level, which is that algebraic interpretation level. We gotta know how to work forwards and backwards on both sides and how to undo operations, inverse operations. But once you get that, my friends, I mean, if you kind of pass this barrier that a lot of individuals get stuck on. It's a little fence that they're looking in. They're like, can I get over? Can I, can I, can I get over this hurdle? <laughs> and if you could do these problems, you got over the hurdle. And we're gonna be doing some heavy math that you're gonna be starting to stand right here. You're gonna be head and shoulders above everybody else. Okay? So. Work hard, ladies and gentlemen. Let's make these things happen. And you know what? Until next time. You know me, I'm always impressed when I see some little math wizards coming around talking that math knowledge here. So let's see if you guys got it, okay? Hope you guys have a great time. I know I did. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.